is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Homosassa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We have a 98% gain in a year. And uh, I mean, you we weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's a TGIF, folks. Let's make it a great one. Don't make assumptions. Ask for what you want. Find the courage to ask for what you want. Others have the right to tell you yes or no, but you always have the right to ask. Likewise, everyone has the right to ask you for what they want, and you have the right to say yes or no. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down. We have the Dow Industrials up 106. Nasdaq is down 78. S and P's up three and a half. Gold contract down 44 dollars, trading at 17.64 an ounce. You get silver down 95 cents, 24 dollars, 34 cents an ounce. Light sweet crude off a buck. $68.04 a barrel, notes and bonds. The 10-year note, down 16 ticks, trading 134 flat. The 30-year down a full point, plus 19 ticks, trading out at a price point of 164.03 in King Dollar. King Dollar's up 537 ticks, trading at 92.781. Euro is at 117. Yen is at 110.21. And the British pound is at 138 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at it. What do you have? Well, we get the jobs number out. It was a good jobs number. Bottom line, you're laying at highs. Now, we're laying at highs. And, you know, yesterday you broke the high. We had 38 million. You'll, you'll do probably 40 million today. You're going at the 47, which is light volume, too. Bottom line, we're up at these highs. And you get light volume simultaneously. NDX 100, same type of setup inside the NDX. We have the NDX right now. You get a sideways move out here today. We made all-time highs yesterday with 20. So check it out. This is about as subtle as you can get. We made, thank you. Sorry, I didn't put those shots up. Here we go. We will get those babies cooking. There we go. There she is. Okay, thanks, man. Um, we take a look at the cues, and what you have with the cues is this. Now, check this out, man. So we went, we went to an all-time high yesterday on the Qs. That was at a price point of 369.91. You did 25 million, 21 million shares. Well, you're going sideways to a little bit lower today with 25, okay? So you get a small expansion of volume. Bottom line, this is not how you get to higher highs. Uh, there's a question about, yeah, would you hold the Qs over the weekend? And I would not hold the Qs over the weekend if you're in these Qs. Uh, bottom line is that you, you made highs, dramatically lighter volume, and, you know, you know, we've been going up on light volume for a while. There's no doubt about that. But when you have a contraction that's this dramatic, it's pretty intense. On a weekly basis, the contraction is going to be from uh, 199. Right now, you're at 139. You know, so bottom line is that I expect you're going to see lower prices. Gold. Gold contract. They, as soon as the uh, jobs number come out, folks, bottom line, they hit gold. Um, hit it hard, too. Uh, gold's down, trading out into the, the last low that was out here with the 1754. We hit 1759. Right now, you're at 1765. You got monster volume. Uh, now, that being said, we had a couple questions about the GDX. The GDX right now, you're going to buy it. This is a buyout here, man. <laughs> it's kind of wild, but it's, it's rejected lower price. You rejected lower price at this... Uh, 3287. It's hard to comprehend that we actually hit 3287. The last low that was down here. So here, let's just go through this for a second. So the last time that we actually had volume on the GDX on the way down, 
goes all the way back to June 17th. That's when we came down hard and fast, the 16th and 17th. You had volume there of 69 million. We go sideways, we make another leg down, you get down to 3287. We do eight, 29 million shares. Well, today, you tested it with 25 million, and it's hard to comprehend, but the bottom line is that it did, um, you know, bottom line, uh, reject lower price. Uh, let's see. An island. Uh, so there's a question, would that be an island top on the GDX? It's, it's not really. It's a little bit messy. It's close, though. Okay, so, it, 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 so there's a question there about, is that an island top on the GDX uh, going back to the... Uh, oh, not, not recently, no. Okay, so here, this, this is even a better question. So the question is, is that an island top from the last week and a half? No. What happens, island tops are at highs. That's, that's, that's how that works. Um, this is certainly a gap down uh, with volume, but you get rejected lower price. You know, so uh, what you do have there for rejection, I can tell you this, for rejection of lower price in the gold market today, it's probably it's pretty amazing, actually. OK, because some of these equities are down pretty good. Uh, if we go take a look at uh, Newmont, you're going to see Newmont rejected lower price also got down to uh, 59.16 to trade at 59.99. The low out there was 59.03 and you didn't make it. So we'll see how this whole baby shakes out. Um, but there is no doubt uh, it's all about the good old U.S. dollar. What is intriguing here, so the dollar's up and the dollar's up big. The last swing point that we had in the dollar, so you have wide price spread in the dollar. 93,191 now is game once again. The biggest deal that I would say out here is the, well, not the biggest deal because we're all in different equities out here. Uh, but if you happen to just pay attention to the bond market, this bond market is still saying it wants higher price, which is pretty amazing. Uh, you're down a half a point today. You're trading at 134 flat, but uh, you are coming into a 2.3 million contract day. That's where the strength was. That was going back on the 19th of July. We're doing 1.4 million contracts. That's a huge difference. That's on your 10-year, on your 30-year US. Z? Nope, USU. We're not on Z yet. Okay, so USU, you get 330,000 contracts, and that is coming into. Five hundred and eight thousand contracts. So bottom line is that guess what? The interest rate structure, meaning lower yields is not done yet. We're yielding 1.28 right now on the 10-year. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrial is up 119. NASDAQ is down 69. S&P is up 5.5. We'll come right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. 
The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow. Dow Industries right now are up 118. Nasdaq's down 68. S&P's up five and a half. Let's go inside uh, the Dow Industrials. We take a, we take a look out here. Well, first, let's just take a look at the numbers. We take a look at the Dow. You're going to see the Dow peaked its head over the highs out here today. We got it to a price point of uh, 35,246, uh, and the 192 is the number, and uh, that's the high. That was that. It wasn't the closing high, but the bottom line is it looks like it's going to. Well, we'll see whether it's going to close underneath that or not. Inside of the Dow Industrials today, the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow Industrials, what you have is that uh, Goldman Sachs is putting 86 positive points, United Health 26, J.P. Morgan 26, taken away from it. Amgen minus 27, Home Depot minus 19, you get Apple minus 7. Inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX, you get Monster, oh, look at that, Monster Beverage. Uh, that's up 5.5%. You got Activision up 2.5%. You got Ross Stores up 1.7%. Uh, Taken away from it. Peloton is down 5.5%. You got uh, OKTA off uh, 4. Zoom is off 3.5. And you got Illumina down 3.3. Uh, we go take a look at the uh, couple of the king dogs out here. We go to Amazon first. Amazon right now uh, trading down 38. So Amazon had the gap down. I expect that gap down is going to get actually tested. Uh, that's still 33, 3306. And 3100 is, is wide open for Amazon to actually get hit. Microsoft, MSFT, we take a look at Microsoft out here. Microsoft right now is trading at, look at that, stay, trading at highs. You can even see what Microsoft, so Microsoft, folks, has been one of the strongest equities in the marketplace, okay? And the bottom line is that what you have out here is that you're, you're laying at highs, but right now, there's less buyers. That's that's what it comes down to. We haven't got over the high yet, which would have been the which is the 21015. Facebook, we take a look at Facebook out here. What you have with Facebook? Facebook right now is trading out at a price point of 363. And this one here is going to get really intriguing because what we do have with Facebook is this. Facebook made all-time highs and then came off that high with volume. That when you come off a high with volume. That is not you and I selling that baby. That's some sort of a fund when you get that much volume off the high. Now, it doesn't mean that you get smoked, but what I've found is that when you come off highs with volume, it's, a, it's always a big heads up. Let me just see if we can get someone. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, this is interesting. Now, look at this. This is crazy. Instead of, so I'm bringing this up, and you can see that actually uh, Fidelity 
owned six percent of the equity and just bought another two million shares yesterday. Unreal. Okay, so there's not a lot of selling out here. Um, well, let me let me put this one here. Okay, eight eight eight. No, it's not seven twenty nine. Last one did Credit Suisse selling at the uh, end of last month, but not nothing really heavy. There's no there's no doubt about that. The TLT, the twenty year plus bond, because bonds. Something you want, definitely want to keep your eye on. You can see even the 20 year plus, okay? We're down two and a half bucks, but the bottom line is that you're coming into uh, 23 million, do fit, you did 15, you know? So this interest rate, interest rate structure is really going to get intriguing because fundamentally you, you can absolutely make the case that, hey, listen, man, um, you know, the jobs are coming back. You know, it was 800 and something odd thousand, but it was still five point something million shot. We'll see how uh, the Fed basically deals with this. And what is going to be intriguing, and I'm sure you've seen many of the articles, it looks like the administration will make some kind of a decision, more than likely in September or October, about the new Fed. Uh, well, it could be Powell or it could be a new Fed chairman. And you can see how uh, basically uh, <laughs> it's, it's working. Articles are coming out basically left and right. We're coming out this week left and right uh, as to uh, what people are speculating right now in the marketplace. And listen, man, this is going to be a big toss up because I would say that market wise, you know what you have with Powell. That's, you know, and I think it's not been bad. Let's put it that way. OK, I think he's I like the idea of how he talks you know, if you ever were around when Greenspan was around and man, trying to understand what he was saying, forget it, man. Um, but bottom line is that we'll see if that's where it shakes out or, you know, the the articles are out there um, and, and the, in the context that you get uh, one of the other Fed governors uh, basically gunning for the job. That's what that's what it looks like anyway. So we'll see how that shakes out. Oil. We take a look at the oil market out here. Uh, oil right now is trading at a price point of 68.03, and we have with oil right now is that it's going to go after its uh, swing point down here. So the swing point in oil is running out at 65.01. Uh, you get some volume out there. Now that is where we broke topside from, folks, going all the way back in in May. So when we broke topside. That's you know, <laughs> it's a normal occurrence that you come back to where you break out from, and you like to test that area. In this particular case, that was quite a way because you're talking about going from 76 to 66 inside the oil market. Um, you know, we'll bottom line see how this basically shakes out. But we do have a high volume low that is laying out at that particular case. Um, small caps. Uh, the question is, do I expect the small caps to go lower? And I would say yes. You know, right now what you have out here, if we take a look at the IWM, the IWM is 19 million shares versus the 24 million today. And then what you have is this, is that you have the, the small caps, folks, because they've been in a consolidation for so long, the clarity of the volume characteristics are much clearer. And what I mean specifically is that if you, you know, put up your, basically, you, you take a couple channel lines and you put them up there, you're going to see that each and every time that we go lower, you have volume. Well, that's building cause for lower price. And the last time that we came down, which was two weeks ago, you came down with 184 million shares. Bottom line, we go up last week with 140. And that's still saying you get a lot more sellers than buyers. And what we're going to have this week is that you're going to have a failure on price at 224.41. So we hit the, you know, this week 225.27. But when you can't hold price, you know, and you have a long consolidation like this, uh, bottom line, if you break the consolidation, you're going down to the next level. And inside of the small caps, that's quite a level. The real question is going to be, of course, um, you know, is the, is the NDX 100. Because the NDX 100 has been ruling everything, does rule everything, and, uh, you know, we'll see whether those chips basically want to give it up. If we go take a look at AMD, AMD is the leader inside the chips. AMD gets up to a price point of, uh, what is that, 122, I think. Yeah, it was 122. You're off that 110. Um, you know, that looks to me like you're going to go right back to the breakout area, which is 95. Uh, if that's what you get, if those chips stop pulling back like that, we'll finally get a pullback in the NDX 100, you know.
But guess what? <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Dow, Dow Industrials are right now up a buck twenty nine. You got the Nasdaq down sixty six. S and P's are up six. X A U H U I. They, the, those those babies are getting smoked out here today. There's no doubt. Uh, that being said, they haven't broke their swing. You get the XAU, the lowest swing point in the XAU is 132. We made it down to 134 inside of the Gold Bugs Index. Let's see, the swing point there, looks like it broke it. One, 256, 70, yeah, we broke it and rejected lower price. Though, bottom line, that, you know, XAU, HUI, GDX still look all right. Stay right there, folks, come right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now is up 136. You get the NASDAQ down 63. S&Ps are up 7. If we, look at the, if we look at the composite, folks, and take a look at the composite, what you have with the composite out here, composite, bottom line, you're down 63, but the composite really is at highs, okay? Uh, the last high it was breaking was 14,863. You're at 14,832. Bottom line is that, you know, that is not giving you the same indication as the NDX 100 is. So it's going to be really uh, wild just watching this close. And I don't expect big action on this close. But what, what you will have on the close is this, is that if we can't get any more volume, uh, well, actually, you don't want any more volume if you're a bull on the close. What you're going to have is this, is that we had all-time highs yesterday with 21 million. You're off with 26. It's subtle. It's small. But yet what I've found is that when they are this subtle and this small, 
that's when you really got to basically take a look at it and say, okay, you know, is this thing going to pull back now? And my take is that the pullback that, yes, we're going to get a pullback, number one, and 355 is game inside of the queues. How, do we, how we came down at the end of July there at the 18th, that looks to me like you can retest that whole area. There's a question there about uh, Jackson Hole and the interest rate and the feds and, the, uh, and inside of that whole structure. Um, you know, I think this is going to be a pretty heavy game. And what I mean specifically is that when you get a new Fed chairman or the Fed chairman's trying to basically stay in his job, which I think Powell wants to stay in his job, um, there's going to be a lot of uh, curveballs out here. I mean, in a monster way. There's no doubt. Uh, because what, you, what you're definitely going to have is that you're going to have the aspect, well, the yapping out here goes like this. The yapping goes that the, it's uh, Lyle Brannan, okay, the other Fed governor, um, there's enough articles that are pushing her out there in the aspect um, of the market. And we'll see how that baby uh, shakes out. Um, and I think it's, it's a big choice. Let's put it this way. It's a big choice because of the fact that how the market is going to react. So the administration's got to make a choice and say, okay, do I just keep Powell and it's status quo and then they can't get blamed for the market going up or down? Or do you get a new Fed governor? And I suspect a new Fed governor you know, then doesn't mean that the market has to go down. It just means that you're taking a higher probability that you're going to get high volatility inside the marketplace. Silver. Let's go take a look at the silver market out here. What we have with silver. Silver's down hard. Silver's down 94 cents. You get 94,000 contracts traded. That's a lot of contracts traded. Silver is going right after the last swing low that we had out here in March. Okay, that swing low was uh, 2382. The high of that is 24.64, and the problem with silver right now is that you're basically into that bar. So, silver. Let me go put the SLV up. If we take a look at the SLV, that's the ETF, ETF. Excuse me, ETF structure for silver. Right now, it's down with 32 million shares versus 31. Uh, the low there is uh, 22.13. We're at 22.56. You can't hear me. Okay. Um, so, bottom line with silver, silver also uh, needs a bid, that's for sure. Needs a bid and actually needs a rejection of lower price. We take a, a look at a couple of the silver equities. We look at Pan American Silver first. We do have a Pan American Silver. That has rejected lower price at 26.27. You're at 26.77. Uh, you're coming into 4.4 million to 1.7. That's, that's a decent setup. Heckler. Heckler is another large silver company out here. And let's see what Heckler's done. He well, this is, look at this. Heckler's actually rejected everything. This is really cool. Heckler rejected uh, 598. You're at 621. Not that that's a lot, but the bottom line is that that is a lot when you have uh, the gold contract trading down 44 bucks and the dollar up so dramatically. It's, it's, this is going to be a big week next week, no doubt. If we take a look at what we're going against inside the U.S. dollar, you take a look at the euro. The euro is down 73 ticks at 117. The last swing low out here is 117.52. We're only two ticks above that. And the yen. We've got to go take a look at the yen out here because where the yen goes, the correlation is if the yen gets cheaper, bottom line, which is done today, gold gets lower. Uh, the yen in three days, we're just going from 108 to 110. So at 110, the yen is much stronger, much weaker against the U.S. dollar. It's 110 yen versus one U.S. dollar. Bottom line, that wants to go to the top of its swing, which is the 110.70. And then we take a look at the British pound out here. And the British pound right now is trading out at 138.79. Now, this baby's interesting. Man. This has been hanging out here big time. It looks to me like the pound actually wants to get up into this 142. So this is going to be really intriguing as to where it goes. And then let's go look at the RAND. So the RAND, that for the folks that are in South African equities, uh, RAND dollar is trading uh, 1464. So as the U.S. dollar gets stronger, the, the RAND will get weaker. And, of course, what ends up happening there is that 
if you're dealing with a company uh, doing business in South Africa, meaning the gold companies, what you have there is that their expenses are in Rand dollars and they get paid in U.S. dollars. Uh, so when that skews the bottom line, it, it meaning uh, they get end up getting paid a lot more money. I mean, in, in a huge way, too, not in a small way. Copper. We're going to take a look at the copper market out here. HG, right now with the copper market, we're flat. And that baby looks to me like it wants, uh, well, we'll see. Yeah, you're pulling back to a breakout area. You get 65,000 contracts traded. Okay, so it's, yeah, you're pulling back with light volume. Well, you're pulling back at 86,000, you get 65,000. So you're still pulling back with lighter volume. If we go over to Freeport, Mac Moran, largest copper producer, well, one of the largest copper producers out there, that's up 96 cents. That wants higher price. SCCO, which is Southern Copper, which is the largest copper company in the world, uh, that right now is up 40 cents. And that's down. Now, it, what's intriguing here with uh, Southern Copper, folks, is that it's, all, it's high as 83 bucks. And you get a high volume high at 83, which is pretty cool. Because what that is, that is setting up and saying, hey, guess what? It will build cars for a higher price. Time limit-wise, you don't, you don't get a time on this. Uh, but the bottom line, it's not a bad setup. That, that's how this baby is shaking out. And we'll see how the rest of this shakes out, meaning um, in the aspect of China as to how much copper they buy, um, how this thing uh, shakes out in general. One of the large problems right now, and you're going to see this on a continual basis, um, is the transportation cost okay uh that is that is a that is a huge problem uh bringing anything out of china and i don't care where you bring it in the world the the freight costs are astronomical and what has happened is that with the freight cost as you know i bring a bunch of stuff in from china the, the freight cost at this particular point i can go to home depot and buy the stuff cheaper than i can buy it in china by the time i get i get the deal here so all the folks in China also know the same deal. So it's only going to be a matter of time where it's going to go down. Because guess what? You just don't send it, send it over. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up 135. NASDAQ is down 61. S&P is up 7. We'll come right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, 
Trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up about 36. You get the NASDAQ down 65. S&Ps are up uh, six and a half. Uh, let's go to our guest. Our guest today, folks, is Andreas Calabrese. Andreas is the general partner of Tampa Bay Ventures. Tampa Bay Ventures, the capital uh, firm backing Tampa Bay's most promising startups. It's a venture capital firm. Uh, pretty cool. We, need a, we needed uh, some venture capitalists uh, in Tampa, St. Pete. There's no doubt about that. Andreas, welcome to TFNN. Thank you for having me, Tom. So, you know, let, let me ask you, uh, well, first off, uh, you know, it's pretty cool that we got a, a fund down here. So what made you open the fund? Well, so I previously was based in, in Stockholm, Sweden, and was uh, working as an early stage investor there. Okay. And um, you see a lot of parallels between cities that have emerged as leading technology ecosystems in Tampa Bay. We have an incredibly strong uh, underlying technological ecosystem, particularly within cybersecurity companies. Yes. And what we theorize is going to happen is as many of these companies begin to exit and, and become public, uh, the employees of these companies, you know, once they've gone past their, their earnout periods, are going to become incredibly interested in either funding companies that their friends are starting or to start companies themselves. So the timing for launching an early stage vehicle seemed to make a lot of sense. Yeah, you know it's cool, it's so cool what you just said. Um, so the CEO, the, the Stu that started No Before, I know him really well. We, we had mm -hmm. offices right next to each other. Um, which, and, and what happened, folks, is that uh, you've actually, Stu was on, and uh, the bottom line is that this turned into, it's a $3.2 billion company now. And you know, it's amazing, Andreas, and I'm sure you know this because you're in that business. We were in Cleveland Street in an office building, and I saw him start as a one-person firm. <laughs> and it was his second go at get-go. So pretty cool, man. Um, so your, your first, your first uh, funding, your first funding, uh, tell, us, tell us about that. Sure. So um, we publicly announced our existence in, in May. Um, and then subsequently followed that up with fairly quickly with an investment into a company called Procoto. Um, and Procoto is a procurement software company. And, and unless you've worked inside of enterprise companies, uh, procurement software is not something the average person would deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But yes. if you look at publicly traded procurement software companies such as Coupa, you can see that they are able to garner incredibly high valuations and become incredibly strong businesses with relatively low amounts of capital raised. And what Procoto's vision is to do is to take some of the tools available to the enterprise uh, in terms of managing their spend and understanding contracts and, and creating automations surrounding when contracts renew and, and the entire management of that process and, and really diverse, uh, kind of democratize the process and bring it to small and medium sized businesses. So we're incredibly excited to back them. I believe we're one of the first Florida funds to ever lead a seed round investment into a, a Y Combinator company, which is the accelerator program that they graduated with. Uh, other Y Combinator companies that you may recognize are Airbnb, Stripe, uh, Dropbox, and Coinbase. Uh, so we're incredibly excited to have them here in the Tampa Bay area and, and, and to have that as our first lead investment. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool, man. I, I had Michael Otis on. And, you know, understanding, you know, 
price-wise, is bringing that service down pretty dramatically. So, I, and I understand exactly what you're saying. It's really not a retail situation, but there's a, there's a big demand for that, right? That's the real bottom line, right? Yeah, correct. I mean, if you think of other companies who have, who have taken similar approaches, um, one you may be familiar with is, is Gusto or Gusto, yes, uh, which, which did the same process for for human resources software. Uh, there's there's a currently a trend of, of taking these business models that have been successful in the enterprise and finding ways to democratize them to much larger total addressable market sizes of, of small and medium sized businesses. Nice. Now let let's picture that we get a lot of entrepreneurs out here. Whether they're they don't have to be just be in Tampa Bay. They could be right across the country. So if they want to do business with you, how do they pitch you? How how this is this is really cool having you on too because because the, the bottom line is that. We're in the public markets, but I've never had a venture capital guy on, meaning that, so how, how do people pitch you? Well, I think you have to, I think kind of looking up at a, at a larger scope, uh, you have to understand the very, the, the very nuanced differences between uh, early stage investing and, and public markets investing, okay. such as some of your audience does. Yes. So if you were to open a hedge fund or, or become a trader, really your, your returns are a function of selection whereby we all have relatively the same information. Uh, we can pick from the same basket of stocks at the same price, uh, and, and your returns beating mine would be a function of how well you select companies. In venture capital, your returns are really a function of access. So for us, uh, what we're really trying to do is develop relationships with the most promising founders locally, yes. and they're going to tell us what they're working on. Okay. Um, so, for, But from that perspective, I would say for someone who's going to pitch us, the three things that are really, really important for us is, is one, do you have an understanding of your customer and why your customer needs your product? And that may come from either having been your customer at one point or having served your customer in another role. But, but having that unique insight is incredibly important. Um, the second would be a very clear road to commercialization. So while we're certainly funding companies that, um, that may be a pre-revenue or, or very early in their life cycles, uh, at least a very structured plan as to how they're going to develop over time is incredibly important for us. Okay. Um, and then the final is, is that it has to be in a space that's highly scalable. So as venture capitalists, we, we simply don't have the holding periods that some other investors have. Uh, so we need companies that can scale up and become very large very quickly. And, and there's a few facets that, that allow them to do that. So those three things would kind of be the main things we look for in an investment. And, and in the Tampa Bay area, how many other venture capital firms are there? Not exactly. Um, realistically, in I general. would say there's there's maybe two others, okay. um, the Florida funders and seed funders. But I would I would say that we're certainly the only ones in our space and and the only the only firm locally who's dedicating all of its capital to Tampa Bay based companies. So over the course of the next three to four years, we're going to be investing in 19 additional companies with with Procodo uh, being number 20. Um, which is incredibly exciting for us because that gives us the opportunity to create hundreds, if not, if we're really successful, thousands of local tech jobs uh, and really transform the area over the next 10 years. Well, I'll tell you from experience, um, I've been down here for 22 years, right? But I'm from Boston mm -hmm. and, you know, everyone thinks Boston was always like it always was. I had an office in Kendall Square and I remember the first time, the, the, now I'm going back to 1980, Andreas, okay? But the bottom line is, is that there wasn't even venture capital there in 1980. I mean, if, when we opened the office in Kendall Square, that was the first, like, that's where all the bi biotechs had started. So it's incredible and really cool understanding that you're open because it changed Boston. And it, it took, you know, 30 years. But the bottom line is that, you know, before it was still, you know, you, you, actually Austin was still basically the... the the Triangle in North Carolina and Silicon Valley. But, you know, at one point, Boston was the same way, man, which I know when I tell people that, they say, what are you, crazy? I says, I'm telling you, man, I was there. I know. You know what I mean? So pretty cool, man. Well, listen, congratulations. Great speaking to you. Look forward to having you on again, man. And I hope you make billions, man, because I, I know what a firm like you can do for this area. And it's really cool, man. Great, thank you. It was a pleasure being on. Absolutely. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Thank you, too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge. Just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 115, Nasdaq's down 72, S&P's up 4.5. Now, this is a number that I didn't think, uh, this is kind of intriguing, man. And what it is, U.S. consumer borrowing surged in June by the most on record, man. I don't know why people are getting in debt, man. This is weird. You know, it seems to me that it's a huge amount of cash out here, but maybe if it's just cash. Okay, so to total credit jumped $37.7 billion. Uh, revolving credit outstanding, including credit cards, jumped uh, climbed $7.9 billion, the second largest increase on record. That's, that's dicey, folks. That's not cool, man. Um, Outstanding loans on motor vehicles rose, check this out, man, this is sick, $40.7 billion from the previous three months. Um, total consumer credit increased and analyzed 8.8% in the second quarter. I don't know. I don't like that number, man. You know, Now, you certainly don't see that number um, inside of the real estate market right now. There's still a lot of cash that's going on, on out there. But uh, bottom line is that when you see an acceleration you know, you saw that that headline. The headline was the most on record. Um, yeah, that's that's how things always start to get in trouble when the debt is out there. It takes a while, folks. Okay, but when you do see debt that uh, goes exponential like that, um, you know, I know we're at low interest rates, but <laughs> the bottom line is that uh, debt is debt. That's that's what it comes down to. Volume wise, out here, if we take a look at it inside the NYSE. We have 531 million, which is really going to be light volume. So we'll do 800 and something. 
Inside the NASDAQ composite, you're dealing with 3.7, so we'll probably do about 4.5. Now, what will happen there in the composite, too, so this is going to get intriguing. So what's happening there in the composite also is that you're going to see that the, the composite itself also has an expansion of volume. After hitting a high yesterday with light volume, and then you're pulling, uh, you're going down slightly with an expansion of volume. And that tells me Monday, you, basically, that NDX is going to be a little red. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows, and whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Everything you need, folks, is right inside you. You might as well have a blast with it. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Please tell your friends about TFNN. Ask them to go to YouTube, search TFNN, come back and visit us Monday. Tommy kicks us off. Great show. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think